Okay everyone, in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate a Ribbon SBC uh, with, between call manager. So to show you here with the image here on the left hand side you see this is a call manager A with an IP address 172.16.0.163 and all the uh, IP phones or all the telephony lines resides here is with 10.x series range. And on the right hand side, you see this is call manager B and it is with an IP address 172.16.0.210. And here um, I'm using 30,000 series range of number. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to route the calls between a call manager A and call manager B using his uh, ribbon SPC. So all the calls that are uh, going for 30,000 from call manager A will route to ribbon SBC and ribbon will route the call to the call manager B. Likewise, from call manager B, the call will come to Riven SBC and Riven SBC will route the call to the call manager. The same thing we have done earlier using audio codes and we have uh, set up the same routing. So instead of Riven here, we set up uh, audio codes. Uh, in case if uh, you have not watched that video, I'll put the link in the description so that you can have a look at how did I integrate uh, two call managers uh, using audio codes uh, SBC. So now, um, just to sh uh, show you a uh, demo here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure everything from the scratch and show you how do you configure uh, the Ribbon SBC from the scratch to run the calls between these two devices. All right, so let me get started. So I'll open my browser here. So if you see here, I've installed already a Ribbon SBC. So what I'll do is I'll log into the SBC now. So as soon as I log in here, <coughs> so this is the first page which uh, I'll come uh, and uh, you know get this uh, first page as a fresh installation. Now if you go to tasks, there are some other tasks where you can uh, back up the configuration if you want to reboot or if you want to export any configuration from uh, Ribbon, right? Uh, or if you want to do an upgrade, you can use this particular uh, tab here. But uh, we are going to more over play with the settings here and we are going to configure uh, everything here in the settings so for the call routing to work right so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to uh, come here and uh, first of all uh, if you look here the admin interface right now is 172 16 1.180 so this is for the accessing the web page so this is for the admin uh, url i'm going to set up a uh, ethernet ip uh, so that you know uh, the calls coming from the call managers can reach out to this ethernet so you can have two ethernets or you can have one ethernet it up it's up to you how do you want to set it up in my case what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up one ethernet so which means like any calls from call manager a or call manager b any call comes in that is going to hit this ethernet interface right so i'm going to set this up right now so i come to the ethernet ip address and set this up as static instead of a DSCP. Of course, you do not want a DSCP to be there, right? So I'll set this up as 1.180. So 0 0.180 is, uh, sorry, uh, I'll set it up 0 0.180. So 1.180 is your admin interface and 0 0.180 is going to be the interface where you're going to route the calls. Okay, so this is going to be my uh, gateway. This is my subnet mask and this is the IP address of your ribbon where you are going to route the call. I'll save this configuration. <laughs> so now if you see here, so we have set up the ethernet interface and admin interface was already set up during the installation. Now let's go ahead and uh, start with the basic configuration here on the ribbon. So I'll come in the bottom and start with a media list here. So if you come to media list, so by default, the, there is a media list created of with uh, G711, ELO and ULO. So I'm going to create a media list. So this media list will contain uh, what kind of codec you want to have in your uh, call routing, right? So I'm going to make it as a CUCM media list and click on add here. And I'm going to use only two codecs here, G711, ELO and ULO and rest of the parameter i'm going to keep it as default click on ok so if, if you look here uh immediate list has been created just imagine uh just uh, wanted to let you know if in case if you want to also enable g729 um as part of your configuration what you can do is you can come to a media profile and then uh come here and create a 
voice codec profile and from here you select G729 so let's give an example G729 and save this so once you save this you need to come to the media list over here and then you can add G729 as well if in case if you want let's add that as part of our testing okay and apply the configuration so right now what we are uh, doing here is we are uh, associating multiple media parameters media are uh, Media parameters ELO, MULO, and 79. If you want to swap the order, you can play with this up and down and swap the order of your priority. All right. So, this is something what we have done as the first part. Now, let's go ahead and, and create a port here. Now, click on go to the listen port and click on add new. So, what we wanted to do is we wanted to, you know, use UDP uh, as a call, uh, as a protocol for. <coughs> For your um, signaling and uh, media for your signaling so what you have to do is you have to choose here you can choose multiple uh, ways udp tcp and tls so in our case we are going to use udp and we are going to use this 5060 port click on ok so we have set this as udp now you can set a uh, tcp as well if you want but in our case we are going to use udp now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come here and create a service table server table so here uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to create two server tables one is related to uh, 160 and one is related to once uh, to 110 so let's do that create new cucm 160 sip server table click on ok and let's define the fqdn of your call manager 172.16.0.16 so this is my fqdn or uh, ip address of your call manager uh, 160 so this is what i have defined here and i'm going to monitor this using options ping this particular interface i'm going to use and monitor using options ping here so i'll click on ok likewise we'll create one more uh, server table for 210 so instead of 160 i'm going to make it 210 and click on ok now in this 210 i'm going to create a sip server and here i'm going to define the ip address of your call manager 210 and it is going to use uh, 5060 and udp as a protocol and let's use options ping and click on ok all right <laughs> so what we have done we have done uh, the server table for 160 as well as 210 now let's create a sip profile here uh, i'll name it as uh, cucm sip profile and uh, let's enable the session media and i'll make this as default i'll not change anything here here in send number of audio channels i'll make it as true and rest of the parameter i'm going to keep it as default all right i'll click on ok now this zip profile is something we are going to associate with the uh, signaling uh, profile now i'll go on the top let's go and configure the uh, routing table uh, before we configure the routing table, let's create a transformation first. So transformation is something where you are going to define how do you define the call routing to be, right? So I'll name one uh, transformation is CUCM160 <coughs> So in this particular transformation, what I'm going to uh, define here is basically uh, like how do you want to uh, route the call uh, between uh, this CUCM so which means like let's say if any call uh, comes uh, to 30,000 so from 160 to 30,000 series range any call comes in so which means when this guy is making a call to 30,000 so how do you want to track this call how do you want to you know route this call so this is what we are tackling here so I've defined this as a uh, six uh, CUCM 160 and going to create new so in this particular section here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say any call that is going for uh, starting with 3 30,000 should uh, be taking this particular transformation profile okay star 
So anything starting with 30,000, three, I mean three, should take this transformation profile. Okay. Now, likewise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a one more transformation. CUCM210. In this, I'm going to define here is any cost that is for 10,000 series, you take this transformation profile. Any call for 10. Okay. And so, so we have two transformation right now. One is for uh, 160 where we have defined any calls for 30,000. You catch this and any calls for uh, 10,000 you catch using 210 transformation profile. Now, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to create uh, a uh, call routing table. Let's come here. So before we create a call routing table, we have to actually uh, define a uh, SIP signaling interface here. So let's do one thing. Let's create a SIP signaling interface here. So let's add new. I'll name it as CUCM. Uh, 210 maybe so this is for uh, CUCM 210 signaling and then here uh, I'm going to um, in the routing table I'm going to uh, okay I'll I have to associate this at the latest stage which I'll do it and then uh, number of channels I'm going to use as 5 and in the SIP profile I'm going to use as a CUCM SIP profile and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use this as 210 SIP service table. Okay. And then round robin. So outbound port, I'm going to remove it. And use register as a keep alive, disable. And in the listen port, I'm going to add this as UDP. And here in the federated IPF QDN, I'm going to define 210 IP address of your call manager 172.16.0.210. And further, what I'm going to do is in the signaling media interface, I'm going to select as Ethernet I Ethernet 1. And then in the media list, I'm going to select as a CUCM media list and remove this uh, proxy with local SRTP. Okay, so this is something I'll do it and save it. Now this is for your uh, CUCM SIP signal. Uh, I mean uh, CUCM 210 uh, SIP signaling group. Now we'll add one more. CUCM 160. Here I'm going to define as the five channels again here, so we can accept five ch concurrent calls at any point of time and okay so sip server table will remain same outbound, outbound proxy we are going to remove now what we are going to do is add the listen port here and here we have to define the ip address of your call manager okay and here signaling media interface and then come top select the media list where you have defined the codec and remove this local SRTP parameter and remaining of the things are going to remain as same. Okay, so we have done this signaling group as well. Now let's do one thing. Let's create a, uh, a routing table here. So in this routing table, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, say, okay, from maybe from 210 to 160. So which means we are saying like a calls from 210 to 160. How do you want to, uh, you know, route this call? So here we have uh, defined that we have just given a description over here. And then in the number transformation, we are going to select it as CUCM 210 because in, uh, we are going to use this table to CUCM transformation 210, which means uh, if you look at uh, the transformation over here, in this 210 transformation, we have said a calls to uh, 10.x series should uh, should be uh, routing via this way so the this is going to take this transformation profile now here uh, in the sig destination signaling group i am going to select it as 160 
so which means we are routing the calls from the trunk coming from 210 to 160 okay and here i am going to select the media list as ucm media list and click on ok now likewise oh, oops what i've done is like i uh, created it under a default route table i'm going to remove this i'll recreate it again i'll name it as uh, from 210 to 160 okay and then i'm going to say here is uh, 210 and in the destination signaling i'm going to select it as 160 and here in the media media list i'm going to select the ucm media list and click on ok likewise i'm going to create another uh, routing table from 160 to 210 click on ok now in 160 to 210 i'm going to create a new entry here Okay. I'm going to define here is uh, 160 as the name transformation and in the destination signaling group I have to define 210 so which means any calls from 160 IP address to 210 should take this particular destination signaling group and here I choose media list click on OK so once you do that you have to come back to the signaling group and make sure um, this particular uh, signaling group over here whatever you have used uh, I have taken the latest uh, configuration so which means like if I have to talk about like 210 so in this 210 I have to associate uh, the call routing table 210 to 160 okay and apply likewise in 160 I have to make it as 160 to 210 applied so now <clears throat> we have just done with the basic configuration uh, let us do one thing let us go and uh, see how does the trunk uh, looks like on the call manager i've already configured the trunk towards uh, uh, the riven sbc so let's see how does it look like okay so i'm logged into uh, call manager 210 172.16.0.210 and if you look at this moment right now uh, the Sunus SBC trunk is not yet up. Uh, it's uh, taking some time uh, because I've just reset the trunk here. But before I uh, show you this, I wanted to show you the actual configuration, what I've applied here in the trunk and related configuration. So let me open this. So this is how the config. So you forget about this uh, description. So I've used this for testing purpose only. Uh, so this was a voice gateway trunk, which I've used this for SBC. So anyways, uh, so this is a Sonus SBC trunk and this is the configuration that I have applied on this trunk. So I've applied uh, the run on all active nodes, inbound CSS. Then if you look down here, uh, I have given the IP address of your uh, Sonus SBC and the port number. And here I'm going to use the SIP profile as a uh, SIP profile test and non-secure SIP trunk profile. So let's see how does the test look like. So if you open this uh, SIP profile over here, I've used this uh, usefully qualified domain name in SIP request and also enabled here. Um, so if you know here by default SIP REL 100 or 1XX option is by default disabled. So I've made it as send prac if 1XX contains STP right and then uh, here I have enabled this option enable options ping to monitor so that we can uh, monitor the SIP trunk so the same configuration I have applied in case of uh, the call manager 160 as well so right now I'm showing you 210 so the similar configuration exists for 160 as well so let me show you uh, the non-secure SIP profile so I go here SIP trunk security profile so let me show you non-secure SIP trunk so I'm using here as uh, non secure incoming as TCP plus UDP and outgoing as UDP. Okay, and yeah, and uh, this is what I have applied on the SIP trunk security profile and SIP profile. So, this trunk should be up in a minute time, it should not take longer than that. So, let's wait for it to come up. 
in the meanwhile let's see if the other um, maybe I, um, uh, let's see the other side of the 160 side of trunk if this is up or not so if you look here uh, in the in case of 160 the trunk is up okay maybe i have to cross check if uh, um, this particular zip profile had this enables options ping yeah it's it is option ping so let's wait for it to come up anyways so what what i'm going to do is i'm going to register um, let, let me reset this trunk first what i'm going to do is i'm going to register two phones and try to make a calls between these two one would be 30000 series one is be 10000 series number just give me a minute okay so my phones are up so this 10 uh, 10007 is registered to uh, the call manager uh, 160 and this 30001 is registered to 210 so let me before that uh, let me show you the call routing between these two so what i've done here is I've created route pattern as uh, 10000 series so what i'm saying is uh, any calls for uh, 10000 series you go from this rl uh, vg and if you look here rl vg is nothing but our um, uh, sunas sbc trunk right so rl vg is pointing to sunas sbc so if you look the trunk has come up on uh, 210 as well now the same configuration i have applied in case of 160 so any calls for 30000 you route it via uh, <clears throat> this particular uh, SIP trunk so which means what we have said in this particular uh, call manager we have given it root for 30000 you route here in this call manager we have said for any calls for 10000 you route here but obviously route between uh, using the SBC okay so now let's see the status okay the trunk is up here also the trunk is up right so what we can do is um, we can make calls between these two devices and see how does the call routing works so I'll make a call from 10,007 to 30,001 okay I got a call now, now I have if to I show, show you, you the monitor here so you see uh, this channel is blocked so which means like uh, this can uh, this channel is being getting used right now as soon as i hang up the call the channels are free right so let's make another call from 30001 to 10007 and see if the call routing works all right so we can see that uh, the calls between uh, 30001 to 10007 is also working fine just for your information right i wanted to show you one more thing is a uh, diagnostic here if in case if you want to place a call from the spc as part of your testing what you can do is you can come here in the test call and put destination and address as like let's say 7 10007 and calling number be let's say 9999 and whatever you wish to and here what you have to do is uh, you have to define this call routing table Okay. so this is just for the testing in case if you want to have a test without registering your phone um, uh, to both the call manager so you have to register the phone in only the call manager where we are, you are doing the testing you don't have to make calls into in, in between them so this is just for the testing purpose if in case if you don't want to make calls between each other uh, so what this will help you to do is like this will help you to validate the trunk state if uh, uh, there can be possibility right that the calls from this trunk to this trunk may be up and running and has no issues but calls from this trunk to tr this trunk has some issues so when you are doing this troubleshooting if you are making a call from here to here you may not know where the issue is is the issue is in this trunk or this trunk but when you're doing a testing on the ribbon sbc by using a test call you can make a call from ribbon sbc to to here so which means the call will come to this particular trunk and it'll validate uh, that what's the state of this trunk is it up and running or not if this call is coming through and the call is not going here so you can think of like then that the issue can be here somewhere right so this is just an example there can be many many other instances uh, which you can use uh, so i also wanted to make a call to 30001 as well and i'll use this 210 as a path okay so we see the calls are coming through successfully 
so this is uh, how you uh, integrate uh, the calls uh, between uh, or uh, the integrate the trunk using um, um, Riven SBC between two call managers. So I'm going to in my future videos, uh, maybe whenever I have some time, I'm going to see how can I use Riven to integrate with um, Microsoft Teams. But that's something like I have to test it out and see how it works. But I'm still learning Riven. I'm not uh, very much uh, familiar or I'm not very, an expert in Riven, but I'm still learning. I'll try to make a video soon. Uh, I hope you like this video. Uh, do give me a feedback if you have any questions or concerns. And...